Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing great. I wanted to come on and give an astro update about what is going on in our celestial heavens. And yes, this time you get to see this as there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about and I really want you to suck this up because this is some really uh, good information that can help you better yourself. It can help you, you know, um, get more into your true essence, so to speak, what you're doing in this life. And, and, you know, it just, um, it helps me too. Like I'm not concentrating on filming. I can concentrate on the work that I'm doing. So anyway, bear with me through this. Uh, for those that like the other video, I do apologize, but I want to do it this way because I want us to get the full impact of what is going on. And I want you to pay attention at how all of these characters and these individual placements, stars, planets, um, what all that means. So our last full moon, our Virgo full moon was on the 24th of February, and that was the ending of a story that began um, last September, uh, September the 14th of 2023. Virgo was a nice grounding energy as it was bringing into light that which is practical and useful. And Virgo is really good at that. It's really good at saying, you know what, this is not really what's needed. This is kind of of the ego and this is kind of too much or what have you. So Virgo would say we need practicality here. We, If we want to make it real, then it needs to be able to be made real, in other words. So, um, and then we had um, Mercury that met up with the sun in Pisces and Mercury was reborn. Um, as he moves past the sun, he is going to have a new message to share with the world. It's like a grand reveal. And please remember that these things don't just happen overnight. It's like an accumulation of different things. Uh, divine timing always comes in. Um, is uh, always comes into my mind when I'm reading the astrology and, and what I'm doing. It's all about this divine timing and this ebb and flow that we have. So they met up, the sun and Mercury met up at nine degrees of Pisces, which is, um, which is a, a degree ruled by Sagittarius. And it is about regulations. Um, so it could have been um, influenced the, um, the creation of new laws and regulations, especially around media, journalism, and uh, including banking here. Um, the Sabian symbol for 10 degrees of Pisces, we always round up when we do the Sabian symbols, um, was an, an aviator pursuing his journey while flying through the ground, obscuring clouds. So this is about going through, upcoming, uh, or overcoming your obstacles through challenging situations. Um, despite things not being clear as you would like them to be, it is about um, rising through the challenges and, and facing our fears, persevering, uh, persevering, so to speak, so that we can uh, get through the chaos, right? So we have these ground obscuring clouds means he can't see the ground. He can't see. So he's having to trust into his intuition and other things, meaning he can't trust in the regular things that we trust in, okay? So we have to look um, for things outside the box. We have to go find our truths outside the box in order to see the picture uh, more clearly. Now, um, we are entering the eclipse season now, and we're going to pick up from where we left off last year. Last year's fall eclipse unleashed a storm of events that have um, opened up the portals to change. And in March, uh, we're going to have a Libra eclipse, which will open another portal of change. And Libra is about balancing. And if you haven't checked out my tarot card of the month of March, please do so because I talk about these balancing energies here. And this is why this works so good here. Let me see if I have this card um, right here next to me. If I do, I'm going to show you this card really quick and then we will move on. So, um, 
in just a moment. But, you know, it is all about that balance. We, uh, the justice card was for March and justice is about having, you see, um, this is, this is supposed to represent the, uh, Greek goddess Themis, which was the goddess of justice. I always refer this to Ma'at because Ma'at was about keeping that balance in the world. And if we don't keep that balance, that is when, um, if, if Ma'at is not served, then chaos, uh, ensues. So her foot is forward. She's regular. She's ready to act. Her sword is up. She is ready to act and um, place justice where it needs to be. So when we have Libra, the scales, the balancing, um, that is going to open up a, another change. Meaning, you know, Libra is going to balance those scales. So it's about fairness. What is fair? Because we're seeing a lot of things right now in our world that are not fair. We're seeing, um, we're seeing victims, right, having to pay for what um, harm has been done to them. We're seeing actual predators walking the street. We're seeing actual criminals that have done criminal offenses walking the street, all while the victims are suffering. And that is not balanced at all. So in Pisces, this is going to, um, Pisces will rule, um, that first eclipse, um, as in Pisces also, we have to remember that it is a sign that marks an end. It is the last astrological, um, it's the last zodiac sign. So it marks an end. So it is also a sign of surrender and, you know, it is about surrendering the self and connecting back to the source of life. That is Pisces. Pisces' motto is let go and let God. And um, you know, then we're going to have April that will bring another eclipse, which will be a solar eclipse. And it will be making that X across the United States that I have mentioned before. Unfortunately, I will not be able to travel to go see this eclipse in person. I did last time. It was very strong. And, you know, it was something else. It, it was truly something else to actually experience that eclipse, to watch how it, it, it's like, it, it's like, um, the, the, uh, it's like the earth is taking a moment. It's taking a pause An eclipse is like a pause. It's like a meditation point. It's, it's like a, a stop, right? So, um, and in that, with this first one, with the lunar eclipse being in Libra, this is, it's going to be ruled by Pisces. So it's going to be, oh, you know, and Pisces rules, um, like people who have been displaced in, in society. And, you know, there are several people that are being displaced in this world right now. And this is where the, the scales are going to swing. But... I'm telling you guys, um, when I did see that eclipse, that changed my life. Now, whether witnessing it, I, cause I know of, you know, a lot of the old myths will say, don't be out in it. Don't experience it because, you know, especially with the sun, because the sun eclipse is like the king must die. It's the ending of one in the beginning of another. And, um, it really did change my life. It really did. Uh, I, it did change, you know, my life did change courses of where I was heading, what I was doing. So, um, it, it did in my life. Um, so, but just to experience that energy of the eclipse was absolutely remarkable. And, um, it, it was, I, I would do it again. I would simply do it again because it was that remarkable, but, I'll carry on with this. I want to read something, and this is by Sonia Grace. And when we're talking about Pisces energy, and I'm going to go into this Pisces new moon in just a moment. And this is the new moon here, right here. Pisces, you see that? She's at 20, uh, the moon's at 20 degrees with the sun. And then we have Neptune, and then there's Saturn, and there's Fomahalt. And we'll talk about Fomahalt in a minute as well. So I will be talking about this cluster right here, but first I want to read you something by Sonia Grace, which is really, really uh, plugging in to this Pisces energy. And the title of this is called Becoming a Superhero. And especially in our world right now with so much technology going so fast and, and AI and all of this, 
I just want to, I want to bring us back to what true humanness is. And um, anyway, I'll just begin reading the story. When Marvel Comics and the spiritual community met in some alternate reality, the seed was planted that humans can be much more than just themselves. The super-duper idea of ascension and enlightenment has captivated the New Age community and left many grappling for answers. Our highly competitive nature requires us to achieve all levels body, mind, and spirit. These goals are muddled with television and movies based on fictitious requirements that can mentally push people right over the edge. Mental illness, stress, anxiety, PTSD, addiction, and more are plaguing a highly driven collective. What is reality? We are living on planet Earth. Most people must get up and go to work. Most people take a shower and brush their teeth, then get dressed. Most people shop for food and make meals. Most people drive their kids to practice or school. Most people must pay bills and manage their money. Most people desire an easier life with more money, travel, and less work. Most people are aware of the political, medical, and global agendas. Most people feel frustrated with one side or the other. These are general examples of what most people contend with in their daily reality. The delusion of what we think spiritualism should be, enlightenment, ascension, altered states of consciousness, a golden age, are goals we can move toward, but not at the expense of ignoring the reality of earth. Earth reality requires attention to, here, to the here and now. Earth reality is best experienced with tolerance, compassion, forgiveness, and loving everyone. Just living on earth and experiencing life involves some level of suffering. Religions reflect suffering as a test of faith, karmic consequences, a way to live in compassion, participation in the divine, a trial of purification, or overcoming an illusion. Buddhist monks give up everything for the practice. Their meditation is a lifetime of addressing karma. Day after day, I work with people who are suffering. Cancer, neurological disorders, strokes, heart attacks, divorced, estranged family members, loss, mental illness, and broken hearts. There is nothing glamorous about anyone suffering, nor do they feel they are endowed with superpowers. The road to being in service is a process of surrender. Surrendering your ego, your attachments to the past, releasing your emotional wounds, and your attachment to the outcome. It is God's will, not yours or mine. The superhero syndrome is fed by the false ego. Not keeping yourself clear energetically will allow the influence of lower vibrational energies to sway you. Having expectations on what service looks like can set you up to believe your idea of service is better than what you are here to work through karmically. Ego versus need. This, in turn, creates failed attempts and disappointment. When we can let go and release our need to be seen or heard and just be at peace, then we are ready to be in service. We won't care if we are walking or taking a bus. We won't care if our back hurts or we don't get the notoriety of our community. Our purpose for being here is to clear our karma and take care of the planet. The earth is our teacher. 
She is the one who helps us to transform and have magical experiences that open our minds and hearts. It is not complicated and there is no need to become Dr. Strange or Spider-Man. You are the best just being you. Your soul brings a particular vibration to earth that we all need. As a collective, we create a vibe that is powerful when united and tolerant, compassionate, and loving. Be in this reality. Work on your karma and give gratitude to the earth for your journey. It is but a blink of an eye and we move to the spirit realm. Let's not rush our time here on earth. Be at peace. That is perfectly said for this Pisces new moon that we are coming up to. It is wonderful energy. And there's one other thing that I wrote down. And I want to tell you about I was, when I was writing my notes. And, um, you know, sometimes I gather up information. I'll read different things. But in the Gospel of Thomas... It states, when two make peace in the same house, they will move mountains. Mm, guys. We speak of the oneness here as we are all living on this earth together. But we also have to understand our individuality, our sovereignty over ourselves. And that is something that I have been talking about for a while is about Remember the past year, I was like, you know, know who you are. Venus went through her struggles. It was about learning our values again. What do we value? What do we love? What do we, what do we truly want to protect? These things. There's a bigger picture here of what's going on other than, you know, the pettiness of some of these things that are happening in our world. So... Let's get on and I'll read and I'll go into this um, astrology. I just thought that was really good to include. And that again was by Sonia Grace. Sonia Grace is a really good author. She's a really good speaker. Um, I've listened to her for a while. I mean, I don't listen to her like a religiously thing, but um, I've listened to her for a while. She does make some good points. So when I do these shows, I talk about different challenges that we may face in, um, in our mundane world. So now I want to go back and look at some things like, um, you know, things that I mentioned. I'll talk about things happening, do little things. Well, this may be happening and that may be happening. But now I want to go back and look at what I've already talked about, see what really happened. So late January and early February, I think it was around the 29th. It was one week after Pluto moved into Aquarius. That is when Elon Musk went forward with his new um, Neuralink, it was that device, it was actually implanted, um, he went for, forward at, at um, implanting a chip into a human brain for the first time, that is very Aquarian, that's very Pluto in Aquarius too, um, and this is where I get a little worried about our humanness, and that's why I wanted to include that about the superhero, we have to remember our humanness. Now, our humanness is very important, and when we do include, um, we introduce these things like this into our bodies, our bodies will in fact lose the natural process of what it has. That old saying of if you don't use it, you'll lose it is very accurate. And that is my opinion. But this device in particular is supposed to help um, give sight to the blind. So, you know, if that's the truth, and then, then, you know, hopefully that can happen. Okay, that would be a great thing, right? Um, so, but again, you know, we have to understand those boundaries. And I think that especially with Saturn being in Pisces, which is, you know, he is not happy here. He's all about structure. He's bringing some structure to the structuralist saying, well, yeah, you know, Pisces is about those dreams and, and those ambitions that we may have. So, if, if this, in fact, is here, he's saying, okay, well, we can have some of these dreams come true, but we must meet, you know, we must have a boundary and know, you know, wh where we can't step because once we step over that line, it, we go into the point of no return, and that's going to be a dangerous downfall. Remember, Saturn is a teacher that wants us to 
you know, operate in our highest potential. Okay, what is better in the long run? Not just for, oh, is it going to make you happy for the second? No, what's going to happen in the long run after this? So, now also we have the Tur Tucker Carlson uh, interview with Putin. Uh, that was very Aquarius energy. Tucker is an independent journalist. He removed himself from mainstream media um, to do his own thing. And honestly, that is very Aquarian themed to change the tradition of something um, like, like journalism. You know, you would have to work for one of these mainstream medias. And there's a lot of people that have met, have left mainstream media because they cannot, they cannot take it anymore. They cannot take what's happening and the propaganda and so forth. So there is that. And then um, the tradition of, of media itself is Aquarius theme. Um, Aquarius is about um, decentralization. So I feel that we can see more and more people, and, and that's happening, more journalists that are coming forward in this time of need. I'm seeing a lot of independent, independent journalists. I myself, I find out information through independent journalists. I don't, you know... And I know it's a little personal information, but um, that's me. I, I don't, I, I don't listen to mainstream anymore. Also, uh, during that time, we saw the first AI-generated porn, and that was through Taylor Swift. And I didn't find out uh, about that until the last moment, but apparently, Taylor Swift uh, had some fake, fake porn come out, and around the Leo full moon. And um, that was actually that Leo full moon was opposing Pluto. So, you know, Leo is about entertainers and, and actors and, you know, people that are in the spotlight. So that's very interesting there. Also, February saw the Apple Vision Pro come out. That's a virtual headset that allows you to see um, icons on different people. So you wear this headset and you can see different icons on people. The other people can't see it. And I don't know, you can look it up. It's It's very... Um, it's, it's very Pluto, very much Pluto and Aquarius. So, um, also another thing that's very much Pluto and Aquarius with, there was a huge protest by the farmers all around Europe. If you haven't heard about that, you need to check that out. Farmers are really being squeezed in Europe. Why? Why would a government squeeze the people that create, that grow food to help other people survive? Why would that be? Why would that be? So, you know, if you haven't heard that, you need to you need to see what those farmers are having to do, what they have to do to protect their farms as well as feeding us. So that's very interesting. Also, you know, we're having uh, fires right now right now in Texas. If you haven't heard about that, Texas farmland, where eighty five percent of America's uh, beef comes from, is on fire. Very. Uh, very interesting in this time and what's going on. So um, you need to look at that. Also, um, don't forget that we're having the fires in Chile as well. And those are um, some interesting fires too. So there's a lot of different stuff. That's Uranus and um, that's Uranus and Taurus there. But anyway, so let, let's go on. Um, I've covered some stuff that has been happening of you know, and I touched on that. And if you can go back and listen to my astrology shows where I talk about, you know, how the, the land will be um, influenced and, and all of that and, and how, anyway, you can go back and check that out. So, so the sign of Pisces, like I mentioned earlier, is about displaced people. It's about homeless. It's about people being uh, put in a, um, in, in an underdog kind of um, energy. But Aquarius is about empowerment to the underdog, empowerment to the little people, so to speak. And, um, you know, those that are being marginalized. And Saturn in Aquarius um, was about, uh, when Saturn here, okay, is Aquarius's traditional planet. And Saturn used to represent the land and agriculture, and we can see how all of this is coming into place. Land and agriculture, homeless people, um, displaced people, and so forth. Mercury, which is right there. Let's see, where's Mercury? That's Venus. 
There's Mercury right there. This is Mars, Venus, and there's Mercury. And he's entered here. He enters at zero degrees of Aquarius. And this chart is done uh, for um, March the 3rd at 5 a.m., which is the actual point of the new moon. Okay, so right at this time, uh, Mercury is moving into Aquarius. So right now I'm, I'm recording this ahead of time. While Mercury was in Pisces, it was a time to expect confusion. So he will be moving in, he's, he will be in Pisces. Mercury will be in Pisces until April the 9th. And then he will move into the sign of Aries at um, 11.03 p.m. Eastern Time. Remember, guys, I'm on Eastern Time Zone, so please adjust for your neck of the woods. While Mercury was is in Pisces, so you can expect confusion, expect yourself to be misunderstood. It is a time that you can't really depend only on your, uh, on your eyes or your mind, I should say. You're going to have to listen to your intuition. You're going to have to listen to your heart. And you're going to have to navigate in a non-linear way. So Mercury's wings in Pisces, they're wet. They're underwater, right? So this is dragging him down. It's bogging down the information some. So think about how when you talk underwater, that, that gurgling down, that wah, wah, wah. That's, that is how that is. So this is a time where you're going to have to rely on your other senses, I uh, talked about Mercury meeting the sun, but he also met up with Saturn and Neptune. And this is all um, equaling to like a total mental confusion and problems with communication outlets. But Mercury and Pisces, I will say, that is a very poetic um, placement. Uh, Mercury and Pisces is the visionary. Um, it can see connection between things that no one else can. Um, it can be a struggle, though. It can be a struggle, but it is, it's, it's really tapping us into that, into that kind of, um, that fantastical energy that Pisces can, um, produce. By March the 15th, though, Mercury is going to make his way over to 15 degrees of Aries. So he's right here now, well, um, on, um, this is the 10th of March. So by the 15th, he's going to meet up right here at 15 degrees of Aries. And according to Hellenic astrology, he is going to be considered moving out of the sun be sun's beams because he's going to be 15 degrees away from the sun. And that and is within those degrees that he's going to become visible again because it, uh, while Mercury is close to the sun, the sun is brighter than he is. So the sun will, um, you won't be able to see Mercury because the sun is, is too blinding, right? So when he moves at, at that 15 degrees, he comes out of the sun's beams. And that is when we can expect some information, some grand reveal to happen for sure. It'll be around that time again, guys. Some, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. It can be a few days, but around the middle um, you know, the last, the last half of March expects some kind of grand reveal coming out. Um, so when he does move, um, when he does move out of those beams, you know, Mercury does have a lot to say because remember he had to pass through all this. He met up with Saturn. He met up with the sun. He met up with Neptune and now he's here and he's making his way to the, um, to the North node here. So as he moves into Aries, he is going to dry his wings off. You know, his his wings are drenched from being underwater in those Piscean waters. So when he gets into that fire element, he is going to dry off and the swiftness is going to come again. The energy will begin to move quicker. Uh, words can be very swift and they can be like arrows. So be careful. They can be used to trigger different things things. So again, be careful. Um, Mercury and Aries says a lot with very little words. It's very swift and piercing energy. So the second half of March will be, um, will be a review for March because 
um, these past degrees that he has come through at those very end because, guys, um, when we get to April 1st, that is when Mercury will station retrograde. So then he will have to go all the way back. So by the 1st of April, this is 20 degrees. So he's going to meet, um, he's going to meet like right in here, which is by Chiron. So when he gets to eight um, on March the 18th, Mercury will re will reach that 15 degrees. Okay. You see this right here? And um, on the 19th, he will um, begin his shadow time. Okay. So on March the 18th, which is eight days after this new moon, that is when we're going to go into Mar uh, Mercury's shadow. By April the 25th, um, I'm sorry. Let me back up a little bit. On March the 18th, that is when Mercury will reach the 15 degrees of Aries where he will meet up with the North Node and begin his shadow. On the 1st of April, he will make his way all the way to 27 degrees of April. And by the 25th of April, um, and that is where the 27th degree of Aries, that is when he will go retrograde. So April the 1st, Mercury will station and go retrograde, going all the way back to 25 degrees of Aquarius, where he will, I mean, I'm sorry, of Aries. <laughs> um, 15 degrees of Aries, where he will station and go direct. So, and that is a time where the pieces of the puzzle will be put in place. Mercury retrograde will be a long review process. So whatever we're communicating between these degrees here, whatever we are communicating between those degrees, we are going to review them. We're going to find some things that have been missed. Um, and whatever we are going to be communicating, this is also going to be involved in our eclipse story. So this could also include propaganda will be very uh, prominent in that time as well. So be very mindful, everybody. I'm trying to warn you here. There's a lot of stuff when um, there's a lot of things that we have to be careful of when it comes to communication. And, you know, Mercury retrograde is not some earth-shattering event. I mean, I guess it could be, you know, but it's it's not. It is, you will see, you will hear people in Indian astrology say you don't sign contracts and things like that. And that's simply because when Mercury is in retrograde, um, he's missed something. He's there's something that has happened, okay. When he's traveling through here, there's something that is going on through here. There's some communications, some kind of um, this could be a contract that was signed, this could be um, anything like that, anything that has to do with, with Mercury themes. He's going back there, like I've said before, it's kind of like you're walking down the sidewalk. And you drop something, you don't realize it, and then you get a certain way. You're like, oh, crap, where is that? I must have dropped it. So you have to turn around and go back and try to find that piece that you you dropped, you left behind. So in saying that, now, March the 10th is when we have our new moon. And our new moon will be in Pisces. It will be at 5 a.m. Eastern um, Daylight Time because we just uh, switched over into daylight savings time and it will take place at 20 degrees and 16 minutes of Pisces and this moon will be in a in a tight sextile with Uranus and um, Uranus is our freedom seeker so this new moon is going to be happening in the third part of Pisces so you can see how this is, this is Pisces, and you see this big pie here. So we have, this is, um, it's divided up into thirds, okay? And at these thirds, we have one, and then we have two, and then we have the third decan. So it's taking place in these last degrees of Pisces. And um, 
this is about chasing our dreams and um, having that happily ever after. Uh, the tarot card that goes with this is the Ten of Cups. And I'll pull this out, the Ten of Cups. You can see this. There we go. I just want to make sure you can see that good. The Ten of Cups, you see the family. They have their house in the background. They've got the, they've got, perfect. they've got the kids. They've got everything, right? So, um, now the thing about this is this Pisces new moon is about an ending. But all endings represent new beginnings as well. Even the number 10 on the tarot card I just showed you is an ending. And it can, it can indicate, um, it can indicate a little bit of a disturbance. Like, um, st it can stimulate unhinged climates. So, we've had two Pisces deliriums this month. And, and it's basically when, um. Three or more planets are in the same sign. So we had, um, I'm sorry, two or more. So we have Saturn, Mercury, and the Sun, and then Saturn, Mars, and Venus. So um, three of them, all in Pisces, and all of it except Jupiter. And as Pisces um, is the traditional sign of Jupiter, okay? Jupiter is hanging out in Venus's sign right here in Taurus. So Venus here, she's still, as I'm doing this recording and as I did this for the new moon, she is still in Aquarius, but she is going to be moving into that. And um, we'll, get, we'll get into that in just a second for that correct date. So it'll all be about pleasing. Now, I will say that um, with, you know, with all of these signs, with all these planets in Pisces, you know, at this time, this moon won't be dominated by Pisces, of course, but it's going to be a dreamy energy. It's going to be about uh, surrealism and it can be very spiritual new moon. It is also about truth seeking. It wants the truth. It wants to get to that heart of the matter. And it's very creative. And one thing to realize is that Pisces is the water home of Jupiter. And as Pisces is a traditional sign, as um as Jupiter is in the traditional sign of Venus now, he is the planet um, of Sagittarius now, which is fire. So This is going to be felt over here, okay? See the line here, from here to here. So, you know, now he is a planet of, of uh, Sagittarius, which is um, a fire element versus the Pisces water. Um, so this energy is going to be delivering a very powerful message to the masses um, it could be like, this is the energy of someone like a preacher or a speaker or somebody that is looked up to standing up in front of people, delivering a message. And it can also be like the silent Buddha when he would just sit and hold the flower in silence. This is that kind of energy. It's very, very moving and very powerful energy. But remember, Pisces is a dreamscape and it is where wisdom is received and and not externalized so this is going to be involving our inner worlds working with them working with, with our inner worlds in order to create our outer world um, it could also be a time to have an external moment of relief, like a good cry or a good, maybe you just need to get something off your chest. Maybe you need to go to a counselor and just um, some kind of psychiatrist, something to just clear something out. Maybe you need to speak to someone. Um, it's something that needs to be clear out. And then 
it's as if the whole world is a little better afterwards, right? Like, you know, how you can sit down and just have a good cry about things or you can have a good talk with a good friend or or your uh, or a counselor or anything like that. And then afterwards, it's just like, oh, wow, I see things totally different. This is, yeah, okay, I get it now. The message for this moon is really about taking care of yourself uh, spiritually, physically, and mentally. Um, this is about working with our inner realm to prepare for the outer world changes that are happening. Uh, Venus and Jupiter are our benefics, and they are in both places, which, um, you know, as she is edging up, when she gets into Pisces, she will be exalted in this. So right now, you know, they're in really good positions. And this is really good um, when she um, when she moves into Pisces, she will have that higher level, that elevation, and um, that will really help us. That will really help us as far as um, loving um, unconditional. Right? So, let me check here really quick. I didn't write this down when Venus is going to be moving in Pisces. It'll be on the 11th. It'll be right after that new moon. Venus will be moving into the sign of Pisces. So, Venus in Pisces is about universal love, acceptance, including working with problems that come with it. And Saturn in the mix here is about delivering um, the obstacles, right? So again, this, this could be some very intense energy that we're going to be working with. Venus moves quick, okay? So yeah, she's right here now, but by the, by this is, um, this is dated, um, but by the time that we get to the 11th, she will be at zero degrees of Pisces. And that is going to change the energy significantly. Um, Venus in Pisces is about, um, you know, when she, when she is there, she is operating at her highest frequency. So she is empowering us to love from that place of unconditional love as well. Not only others, but the self. Um, also, she will have, um, when she meets up with Saturn, um, this will create some obstacles. Um, Saturn, when Saturn and, uh, Venus square and they squared not too long ago, that's kind of like having a bad hair day. And listen to my last um, astrology show when I talk about uh, Mars and Venus. That is when I talk about her square with Saturn. So that's kind of like having um, things are just not growing great because Saturn brings challenges to us. And it's, it's, it's challenging us to maintain an open heart. And, and I feel that whenever Venus comes in, she softens, especially when she moves into Pisces where Saturn's hanging out. She's really going to soften him. Because this is this is where she's exalted, right? And whenever a planet is in, you know, when she comes in, he's going to want to make her happy. This is her home, or, or her. Um, uh, she's she's exalted here, meaning she's operating at her highest highest frequency. She's like uh, the queen coming to visit, so to speak. Okay, so he's going to want to speak her. And she is empowering us to love from unconditional, meaning that um, there could be challenges, but we have to maintain an open heart in order to not only um, move forward, but to heal ourselves. Again, this is about mind, body. Um, this is, you know, spiritual healing, right? This is physical healing. Um, this is emotional healing. All of this, this is going on. Uh, Saturn, again, you know, he will, he's going to be um, making up those obstacles, but she's saying that, you know, we can get through this. 
this is but a moment in time. Venus met up with Aries right there in, um, in Aquarius. And that was about bringing the masculine and feminine energies together, healing um, what damage had been done in order to move forward for the highest view going forward, looking at, you know, the next five years, what's going to happen. Um, and, but, you know, before, remember before she moved this, which created a lot of pressure from her, but still she's feeling pressure right here in between these two, but the closer she gets to Saturn, the more he will soften up. And, you know, a Pisces energy with Venus in there, that is adding enduring love. It's love that lasts, that endures the test of time. And it's also releasing as well as survival. So this is about loving and releasing in order to heal. So, for example, if you're going through a bad relationship and you love each other, it's just so much stuff that has happened and it's just... Sometimes you just have to step away. You know, you have to love yourself more in order for both of you to heal. So this could also mean um, that kind of relationship. Like if your relationship has been stressed and has been um, tense, it's about working it out, enduring, facing the challenges head on and working through those challenge, um, working through those challenges to be stronger and um to be closer. It allows one to release pain in order to heal. So this last transit of Saturn in Pisces happened in the mid 60s and 90s. So Saturn here in Pisces, this is playing a big, big role here. Um, I will say Again, um, Venus is going to be very persuasive. So if we can look back in the mid-60s and the mid-90s, we can see what was going on at that time. And we can get more of an understanding. Um, I didn't get into that because this is already going to be long enough. So I, I didn't want to include it in this one. But please, you know, uh, feel welcome. You know, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, so as... When Saturn is in Pisces, he is weakened in this in this placement. When Venus moves in, you know he's going to want to going to want to um, please her. So this could be some structure and order to chaos, um, but it's going to require work because Saturn is about work. Okay, that means that you're going to be required to do your part. And that's one thing that, you know, people don't understand nowadays in our world of instant gratification. They don't understand that some things you have to go through A, B, C, and D. You can't just go from A to Z because you're missing the experience within. That is the biggest thing that I'm seeing right now as a teacher is that people want it right now. They want it the second they warned it three minutes ago but some things is about divine timing and it's a cycle that it has to work through and the experience of that how can you truly heal heal something that you've never been through how can you truly understand what somebody's going through if you've never been through it you cannot give yourself something that you do not have that you do not already have in your possession you cannot so this is a, a creative energy. This is going to be very creative. Um, and it's about having good results. It's about doing your work, doing your part of the work that you need to do. You will get good results. So by the 20th of this month, we will be having the spring equinox, which is the new year for astrologers, as that is when the sun moves into the first zodiac sign of Aries, and this is the beginning. This is the beginning of spring for the Northern Hemisphere. So when the sun moves into the zodiac sign of Aries, the sun is exalted, meaning he is operating at his highest potential. This is the energy of a great teacher or leader. Um, this is also about personal sovereignty and selfhood. It is very um very honest and straightforward energy. 
The sun in Aries is going to give us the ability to push past our own, um, tim um, you know, being timid about things. When the sun is in Pisces, it's very timid. So when he moves into Aquarius, um, that timid energy is going to be gone. He's going to be able to push forward and have that courage. Um, Aries can be aggressive, um, but it is about having courage to push on, go forward, and being persistent. This is a time of rebirth and new beginnings. This is fresh beginnings as spring is here. And I will talk about the spring equinox in another show. Um, now, some of the stuff I want to add here for the rest of this reading is that um, Venus in Pisces and Jupiter in Taurus, this is definite good energy because they are in each other's signs and they will help each other along the way. With a bonus of Saturn in Pisces, uh, this will be great creative energy that will push us forward into a new frontier regarding technology. Also, uh, Venus and Saturn, when she meets up with Saturn, um, our values, uh, this is going to um, have us creating, looking at our values. Um, we could be re-examining them. Uh, we could be uh, creating new boundaries for our lives. Um, you know, we could also, it could also change the way we're going a little bit. It could help us go forward into something that is going to be <clears throat> better for us, excuse me, <clears throat> so sorry. Um, there will also be a fire trine with the sun and um, with the sun and the moon in in fire signs. So it invites us to have a lust for life. So this is going to be a really active month. And I will say also, um, if you are in a creation process, for example, you're trying to create something, whether it be art, a business, that sort of thing. Um, be careful with who you're sharing your information with, because I want to remind you that not everybody wants to see you succeed in life. Those people that think that we may think are our good friends are uh, want the best for us. They're not really our friends. They're actually jealous of us. So be careful of that. That can sabotage you. As we go on, Mars will have his conjunction with Saturn and Pisces. See, he's Mars is moving. He's a little slower, um, but he's going to meet up with Saturn. He's going to have his... Um, um, he will meet up in Pisces on April the 10th at 4.36 p.m. Eastern Time. And this is the first time they're meeting up in Pisces after two years. Um, so this is... Um, this has been seen as misfortune. Okay? So let's be careful because when, um, ever any time that Mars has met up with Saturn, that's always been, um, it's been in mundane matters, I should say. It's been a, a placement of misfortune. So Mars will rule, will rule the next eclipse, is the um, solar eclipse that will flow over the United States on April the 8th. So this energy could rouse us to anger by empathizing for those that are affected by tactical and spiritual world warfare. Um, when Mars is in Pisces, one thing that we have to remember about Mars is Mars is very loyal. And in Pisces, he's devotional. Okay? It is, he is very dedicated not only in person, but in spirit. And um, Mars and Pisces, though, is like having, you know, when you see the flame that's on fire, but when you, that is Mars, but when he is in Pisces, you put that sword in the water. So it's not as effective as we would like him to be. So that can be good. But again, Mars is in a water sign. So we could see a lot of things happening with water, such as flooding. 
And I will say it's not going to be a good time to do anything risky in water. Remember, Mars is war and Pisces is the sea. Saturn is the sea as well. So be careful when it comes to water and uh, different water activities. Um, also, this is motivation for action that could be motivating us to put ourselves into action um, to something that been, we've been needing to go after, okay? So if it's something that you've been wanting to go after, you've been putting off, that could be a good time. So, yeah, guys, I just gave you a, a little glimpse into April there about that because it's very powerful energy and I want you to be afraid not afraid I'm not I don't want to put you into a state of fear I want you to be aware and I want you to be able to work with these energies in a way that will benefit you that will help you live your life to your highest potential I believe that we all came here to this planet with our own energetic frequency our birth charts are like our fingerprints no one has the same and in saying that, that is you. You are here to provide a gift of some sort, of somehow. And I want you to be able to use that to your highest good. To use this energy to transform it, to mutate it, right? To be the alchemist. You be the alchemist in creating um, your life. There's some things we can't control. That is true. But there's some things that we can control. And... You know, Aries especially is about stepping into our sovereignty and taking responsibility for ourselves and doing those things and understanding that no one is going to do it for us. You know, Saturn tells us that we can't achieve what we want to achieve, but we're going to have to put our work in it. It may not happen overnight. And we have to understand that experience, each step is so beneficial and is priceless for the outcome. All right, guys, um, that is it. I just wanted to share that. I know I moved forward a little bit, but I just wanted us all to see how this energy is unfolding and coming about. And goodness, I'm sorry I took this an hour again. I do apologize. But when I do these, it, they do get a little lengthy because I'm doing them, you know, twice a month sometimes. So I will try to include more, but there's just a lot of things going on. And especially I've been a little bit under the weather, so I haven't really had a voice so there's that as well. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for your support. Please, um, you know, like and comment and, and you know, do be positive and help this channel grow. And if you know anyone that would like to hear this, please share it with them. Thanks again, guys. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day and Mary Park.